So we've looked at a derivation of Stokes's law and we've defined conceptually uh, what it is describing. Now let's look at an application. And this is, the application is to Amperer's Law. Uh, and um, one of Maxwell's equations. And this is given on page 813 of Greenberg. So Amperer's Law, we're going to start with Amperer's Law, and we're going to show how from Amper's law we can get to one of Maxwell's equations. So that's the goal here. So starting with Amper's law, that states that if we integrate a magnetic field intensity H around a closed curve, that's equal to I which happens to be the net current passing through the closed curve. So H is the magnetic field intensity. And it has units of amps per meter. And um, I is the uh, net current, electrical current, passing, a, or I guess, through or across the surface of the closed curve, I guess. So it's passing through the uh, closed curve C. Okay, so this states that the integral of the magnetic field intensity around a closed curve is equal to the net current passing through the closed curve. So we can visualize um, our closed curve C. Again, it could be, well, actually, maybe it's not in the plane of uh, the computer screen here because I'm going to draw uh, our current passing through this closed curve. As such. Maybe it's not as good. As, yeah, I'll just draw like this. Okay. Um, And uh, again, uh, dr is a uh, infinitesimally long, a vector of an infinitesimal length directed tangent to the curve. And uh, h is a vector field that's uh, sort of surrounding the curve. Wherever it, whatever it may be. All right, so let's look at the current passing through the curve. So the current passing through the curve is if we were to integrate over the surface, so um, our curve encloses a surface S so we, the total current passing through the curve is equal to the integral over the surface and hat of n hat dotted with 
sigma times v dA. And so n hat is uh, the unit normal to the surface S at every point. Sigma is the uh, charge density, electrical charge density. And this is, uh, the units are in coulombs per uh, meter cubed. So it's the number of electrical charges per volume. And uh, V is the uh, charge velocity. And it's measured in coulombs, or sorry, meters per second, distance per time. Okay, so this is I, and Amper's law states that the integral over the closed curve of the magnetic field intensity, the component of the magnetic field intensity tang tangent to the closed curve, if we integrate that, that equals I, and so we can write, just copy the right-hand side down as we've drawn it above, or we've written it above. and uh, let's just check our units here. So the left-hand side, again, the magnetic field intensity are in amps per meter times meters. So the left-hand side is in units of amps, and the right-hand side is in units of coulombs per uh, meter cubed times meters per second, which is the velocity times an area, which is meters cubed, sorry, meters squared. So, so we have a coulomb per second, and indeed a coulomb per second is equal to an amp. So our units uh, check out. Just because we're, I, I wanted to make sure we're right on the units because uh, unless you work with electricity and magnetism, um, these might not come uh, natural, or these units may be a little bit uh, uh, unfamiliar to you. Okay, so let's rewrite that equation at the top of a new page so we have room. So here again, we have um, an integral equation. That's, that's a bit difficult to solve because it's an integral form. So the way we would get rid of the integral would be to uh, Put in, so there are two different integrals. One's over a surface area, and one's over the edge of that surface area. It would be better if so if we could write both of these, the left hand side as an integral over a surface area. We could write the whole equation in one integral, and uh, eventually get rid of that integral. So using Stokes theorem, using Stokes's theorem. The left hand side is replaced by a surface integral. So recall that Stokes' theorem states that the component of a vector field integrated over the edge, along the edge of the surface is equal to the integral over the area contained within the surface of n hat uh, dotted with the curl of h. The, curl, the component of the curl of h normal to the surface. And so 
making this substitution, the left-hand side becomes the integral over the surface of n hat dotted with the curl of h. And that's equal to the right-hand side. And these are both identical integrals. And so therefore, we could write them under the same integral. And, um, and the equation becomes a single integral. And again, because s is arbitrary, it is, um, it is of arbitrary shape and size. So in order for um, this integral to be 0 when s is an, of arbitrary shape and size, must mean that uh, no matter you know, how large s is or whatever shape it is, this is always true. So that must mean that the integ this must the integrand must be zero everywhere. And therefore, we have uh, the curl of h is equal to sigma times v. And we can replace sigma times v, the charge density times the velocity, by the current density, j. And the units of current densities is amps per meter squared, or coulombs uh, per second per meter squared. And, um, and the curl of H is equal to J, is one of Maxwell's equations. One of Maxwell's equations of electricity and magnetism. So the um, Stokes's theorem was valuable in that we started with Faraday's law, which was an integral of the magnetic field intensity around a closed surface. By using Stokes's law, we were able to cast both the left and right hand side of Faraday's law as a surface integral. And in so doing, because of the arbitrariness of our surface, we could eliminate the integral altogether, knowing that the curl of the magnetic field intensity is equal to the current density at every point. And this gives a differential equation that's much easier to work with than these uh, integral equations. Um, and it's an, a very important one in basic physics of electricity and magnetism. Okay, so that was an application of Stokes's theorem.